let's chat about GIS presentations and the education bubble. Over the last year, several articles were written and presentations were given at many conferences about the so-called education bubble. Definitions of the bubble vary, but the articles make the case and the presentations made the case that unlike in the past, many of today's students are not seeing a sufficient return on their university investment in terms of relevant workforce skills to the extent that they were not being able to secure a job upon graduation or even to repay their student loans. One of the articles I found particularly interesting was an interview with English professor and executive director of the Association for Authentic, Experiential, and Evidence-Based Learning, or AAEEBL, Dr. Trent Batson. Dr. Batson has designed, implemented, and promoted instructional technology at the University of Rhode Island and at MIT. He believes that innovative uses of educational technology, such as electronic portfolios, or e-portfolios for short, can contribute to the learning experience, may help students to consider the higher education investment worthwhile, and will help keep education relevant. All of us on the ESRI education team believe that teaching and learning with GIS is an innovative use of a technology that has already transformed decision making and entire organizations for the past 40 years. GIS provides a context for critical thinking, problem-solving skills, and in-demand technical, discipline-specific, and organizational competencies recognized by the U.S. Department of Labor. Moreover, it also fits in well with Dr. Batson's notions of effective e-portfolios. Batson states that e-portfolios contribute nothing by themselves. They are only worthwhile if their capabilities help faculty redesign their courses so that students can become effective learners. Over the years, I have observed that it is very difficult to remain passive when using GIS in an educational setting. Furthermore, consider the following image taken from a recent presentation I gave using ArcGIS Explorer Online. Throughout history, maps have stirred imaginations and inspired explorations of the unknown. This is part of a longer presentation that I gave. But the point is that presentations using ArcGIS and ArcGIS Explorer Online help students tell stories investigate and explain. ArcGIS Explorer Online presentations can be saved, shared, and returned to later, taking advantage of the elapsed time that Dr. Batson claims is valuable, reflected time for students. ArcGIS Online presentations are not static. If peers or the instructor ask questions during the presentation, the student can change symbology, scale, region, add or subtract variables, reclassify, and perform other tasks that make the presentation a learning experience for everyone. Indeed, the whole notion of presentation is transformed. I'm not even sure presentation is the right word. It's becoming an interactive and creative experience, really, throwing into question even the, like I say, the appropriateness of that term. These interactive experiences are therefore a redesign of instruction favored by Batson and others. So, let me ask you, do you agree that teaching and learning with GIS aligns well with innovative uses of technology as defined by Dr. Batson? Do you believe that educational GIS provides critically needed skills for students while in school and upon graduation? How can we, as a GIS community, leverage research by Batson and others to promote and expand GIS throughout all levels of education? Thanks.